Hey guys, hope everybody's doing fine. Today we're going to talk about this very special lens from Siroe, the 24mm f2.8 1.33x anamorphic lens. Disclosure, they sent me this lens for review. No money changed hands, I didn't get paid. They don't get to see this video before I publish it. That out of the way, it's the third in the series of low-cost anamorphic lenses from the company. The 50 came first, then a 35mm, and then this, the latest and widest of the bunch. It's quite impressive also and worth noting that they offer these lenses in multiple mounts, including E, X, and Micro Four Thirds. Unlike 1.5 or 2x anamorphic lenses, which require a 4x3 anamorphic recording mode from your camera, 16x9 recording is perfectly fine with this 1.33 squeeze factor lens. Focal lengths are tricky with these kinds of lenses. Because of the nature of anamorphic lenses and their extended field of view horizontally, there is no one-to-one -one comparison. So if you're using traditional spherical lenses, this 24 is equivalent to a 35 or 36 on a micro four thirds body. Now that the tech specs are out of the way, the question remains, why shoot anamorphic at all? If you're familiar with my wedding work, or even if you're not, link down below, you know that I'm a big fan of the look. I like composing on a longer, horizontal plane. I almost exclusively use a 1920 by 816 sequence to mimic a wider aspect ratio. I also shoot with frame markers with my cameras to assist me in maintaining that ratio. The trade-off, of course, is that I waste the pixels at the top and at the bottom of my footage. Shooting anamorphic allows me to maintain that wider field of view without wasting any of the image captured by the sensor. Again, this is totally subjective, but I like my work better presented in that manner. I feel they look more... cinematic. Recently, I tagged along a pre-wedding shoot so I can test this lens and get some footage. There are very distinct characteristics of anamorphic lenses. We've already discussed the wider field of view. The next two are horizontal fairing and ovalish bokeh. Like the others in the lineup, the 24mm is made out of aluminum aircraft grade and has quite the heft. Full open is at 2.8 all the way to f16. To be honest, I kind of missed the 1.7 opening of the original 50mm. It wasn't the sharpest, but I love the extra stops in low light situations. However, this one, even at 2.8, is super sharp. The focus and aperture rings are smooth and tactile. Definitely a pleasure to use. It has an approximate 180 degrees of rotation. Edge-to-edge -edge sharpness is excellent even at 2.8, and things tighten noticeably when stopping down to even f4. I'll take you home. The Siroe anamorphic lens is used like any other spherical lens in your rotation, with just a couple of differences. Because of the way the lens is constructed, it's taking in more information on the left and the right, the horizontal plane, I've said that multiple times, therefore you get a squeezed, bunched up recorded image. So in order for you to frame properly, you can de-squeeze the display image if your camera has that capability. The GH5 can, the Blackmagic with the latest firmware update can, can your Sony, can your Fuji. Or you can use an external monitor or viewfinder and de-squeeze it from there. On a recent trip to Dumaguete, southeast in the Philippines, we filmed some footage of a hike we did in Twin Lakes Nature Park. <laughs> we 
we had the 24 on a GH5 on a Zion Crane 2S. The trek was only 900 meters, but it had just recently rained, so the path was slippery and a little bit dangerous. It felt more like triple 900. Nonetheless, we got to the vantage point safely. We drove an hour more to the beaches for some drinks over sunset. I had one of those drinks with a tiny umbrellas and a slice of orange on top. So once you get your footage and import it into your project, the only thing you need to do is change the pixel aspect ratio from square pixels to 1.33 HD anamorphic and you're good to go. No bars and no cutting off images from the top and bottom. Since I'm editing this video, the one that you're watching right now on a 16 by 9 aspect ratio, I'm scaling down the HD image to around 75% so it can accommodate the full horizontal plane. I really wanted to put the lens through its paces so I went out again for another afternoon of shooting. <laughs> Zoom on this? In conclusion, the crop sensor anamorphic lens lineup from Zeroe is truly a remarkable combination of innovation and affordability. Like the other lenses, the 24mm is superbly built and a joy to use. I love that it's wider because I use Micro Four Thirds. I get 2x crop instead of the 1.5 APS-C for Fuji's and Sony, so wider for me is better. At f2.8, this lens is sharp even while fully open. At a wider focal length, the ovalish bokeh is not quite as apparent like in the 50mm. However, the flares on the 24 will deliver. To sum up, the 24mm f2.8 1.33x anamorphic lens is a great bang for your buck lens to start you off on your anamorphic journey. Thanks for watching. Only my eyes.